All you want. Little would you know that where this mini market now stands was once the site of a breakdance club. More than just a club, Radiotron was discovered by Hollywood in the early 1980s and actually became the origins of the general public's exposure to breakdancing. Radiotron was in a poor section of Los Angeles near McCarthy and was used as the location for the motion pictures Breaking and its sequel, Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo. The founder and primary force behind this hot spot was a young man named Carmelo Alvarez. I had about 300 little breakdancers there every day meeting there after school. My intent was to develop a cultural art center for inner city youth who wouldn't normally have the privilege to develop their talent to guide them and try to nurture their talent. The uh, breakdance culture actually started in New York, in the South Bronx. What kids started doing is sort of like uh, teasing each other, you know, like slap fighting. I'm sure you've you know, had a slap fight with your friend and you really don't hurt each other, like spar. And they started teasing each other and beginning to move to the rhythm of break. And they created a step which is called up rock. From up rocking, it went to doing floor moves. Meanwhile, in Los Angeles, kids were, were doing the robot while they were up rocking and doing floor moves in New York and LA. They were doing robotting, popping. And once kids from New York started coming to LA and kids from LA going to New York started mixing up. Really, it wasn't known until like the 80s, the beginning of the 80s, but it's been around since the early 70s. Now it's all through the world, it's in Japan, they're breakdancing in Japan, they're rapping in Japan, scratching, all different countries, France, London, they have even hip-hop um, series in France, and it's called bebop, and in Africa, and all the countries, basically. Hip-hop is a subculture that originated originally in South Bronx in the early 70s, and it's when the blacks and Hispanics mixed their styles of dancing and their cultures it created a new subculture, which is known as hip hop. Hip hop consists of scratching, which is the DJ playing his melodies with the record and pulling it back and forth. Rapping is a person who is singing in rhymes, like, what's up everybody and how you been? My name is Oz Rock and I'm here to send. And it's just poetry, but in harmony. <laughs> my name is animation and I'm <coughs> my name is animation you like that my name is animation and I'm here tonight to rock the beat and I do it at night and when I rock the beat you see I do it well I push more power than Doral sale you party people check it out and listen to me because I, I'm a cool brother finna rap to the beat and when I, I get down I want to be known a party people just to check it out turn your radio <coughs> Break dancing is a lot of consists of popping, locking, and the spinning, and basically the the head spins, um, 1990s uh, back spins. That's all the spinning part of break dancing. That there's another one was, which is isolation, which is a lot of, you know, isolating your body, which is the mime part of it. There's the locking, which is California style, which is a lot of points and. You know, a lot of locks. That originated out here in the early 70s also. That's part of breakdance. I think breakdance became popular uh, because it was something that was not only very uh, athletic and very physical, but it was also creative and artistic. And kids began to get attention. They could stand on any corner, start breakdancing, and all of a sudden they had a crowd. 
So that crowd and those applause, and even sometimes they'll, they'll, they would throw change at the kids, gave the kids a sense of self-esteem. So then they began to beat against each other and battle, but not in a violent way, in a dancing way. So it caught on. And then when the Olympics came, a lot of athletic wear companies sponsored the kids. And, and then when the movies came, the kids saw the movies as maybe a way of getting out of the impoverished neighborhoods to become successful. Watch out my muscles. Uh, a year after we filmed the movie Breaking There, the studio came back to film Breaking 2, Electric Boogaloo. While they were filming, a young man walked in who had just, uh, apparently he had found a flyer on the street. And I had seen his performance at a breakdance contest and I thought this young man was phenomenal. His name was Mr. Animation. I came up there with my mask, I had a monster mask, and I was ready. I said, man, I got to get in that movie, I got to turn it out. So at the last time, I snuck in it, and I saw this lady, and I was performing for her. So she had gave me a release paper and, and signed it, and oh my God, I knew, I knew I, that she would have got in trouble if they would have found out about it. And I started really putting a show on, so the producer saw that from there, he just put me on further right there. He said, we would like for this young guy to participate so do you hear us, Monster Man? I say, yeah, sir, I hear you, I hear you, I'm ready now. <laughs> and one of the things that makes him so unique, I think, is that not only does he do incredible mime and movement with his body, he also does his own music, he knows how to talk to the people. He does comedy. I mean, he can entertain rich, poor, black, white, doesn't matter. And I'm from LA, I'm from Salé. And I grew up in the neighborhood. And I started dancing about when I was eight years old. I'm 18 now. I started off doing a little dance like this. It's called the lock. I was, you know, locking and stuff. You know, my mother, she taught me a little go-go dance. And um, started locking off like that. It was kind of silly. <laughs> Actually, I was a game banger myself. Back in those days, they called me Scrappy Doo. And um, I used to beat on people, you know. I, I used to steal. I used to take people things from, if I see a radio on a, on a porch, I say, that's my radio and I'm gonna get it. So um, it came to a point where I, I had to do a little time in juvie, you know, juvenile, to get my, my head. It happened to me that I have this manager named Carmelo Alvarez. And um, Carmelo, he, looks, he looked it out for me a long time. You know, I needed a lot of help. That's one of the things that I think is very special about animation. He doesn't mind going to Skid Row to homeless people or inner city youth and performing right there on the street corner. And he was able to make a lot of these people laugh and, and be happy and dance. You could see him working with kids. He motivates them and inspires them to dance. And he does it in a, such a a simple but yet a uh, very elegant way that makes the kids feel good about themselves. Go comb your hair, you dirty, dirty bear. Go comb your funky. One of the problems that I see with him though is that oftentimes he goes back to that hostile environment and he doesn't have a support system behind him. So he needs support from from not only the entertainment industry, but he needs support uh, in terms of helping him 
to get his own personal life together. A ticket, I'm party people in a place to be. You see, I'm a little Check it out, people in a place to be. You see, I'm busting on the mic because I'm one MC. So listen to up what I have to say. I'm a cool young brother and I bust this way. I'm busting it down without a let me hear people just a scream and shout. Because of when I get the busting on the microphone, I tell you part that people I'm busting alone. So bust the beat. <laughs> A young man by the name of Oz Rock that appeared on a movie called Body Rock. Phenomenally talented young man. I mean, top, top notch breakdancer. Yeah, I'm originally from New York. I was, um, Originally, before that, I was from Providence, Rhode Island, and what got me into dancing, period, was uh, Saturday Night Fever. Then I got my chance to go to New York, and then I noticed that in New York, and only in New York at that time, 1978, I, I was watching these kids, and they were, like, spinning on their butts and spinning on, you know, trying to get on their head and spin. And I was wondering, well, what is this, you know? Is this a sport? You know, what kind of culture is this? So I got into it more and more, and luckily I found a group, and they were called Dynamic Rockers. They got me into it more, and they started me off. Then I went to another group called Rocksteady. Now those were the kids that were in flash dance, and I'm sure we flash dance. They were the ones in the street break dancing. They refined me, and then I went on my own. I got a chance to go with Nike Corporation. And they sponsored me, and they brought me out here to California. See, what they did was they brought me and did all shows all over the country. But when they got to California, I said, I want to stay here. Please forgive me. I want to be a movie star. Nobody breaks like me, and you know it. Oh, you know. He can do all your moves, Oz. Yeah, right. If he's so funky fresh, why don't you just bring him to me? Well, when did he run away? He ran away. He ran away. He ran away. He could not stay. What's the matter? His mom wouldn't let him play. Yeah, well, some guys that? aren't as hung up on breaking as you are, babe. But he sure knows how to treat a woman. Ooh, tell him, tell baby. Him. What? What's the matter, Oz? You forget how to rap? What's wrong with you? What you been doing with this guy anyways? Just talking. About? A lot of things. Look. Dancing. I must say, it was a complete pleasure to spend some time with somebody just normal for a change. Well, I'm not normal. No, you're not normal. You're special to me. It's just... Rotten. I'm sorry. Can I kiss? Now they're breaking. Let's go. Come on. Oz! What? First, it was rough because I had just moved to New York City. I didn't know the lingo, you know, I didn't know the. I didn't know really the culture itself, so I had to I had to go against this other guy, and that was the leader of the group. beat him and I got into the group because myself I came up with the idea of water breaking now water breaking is linoleum or a surface 
doesn't have any surface that's more or less slippery that you put water on it and what that does what is eliminates any friction and just like it's a motion in motion will stay in motion if friction is eliminated so the closer you be, become to that no friction the faster you can go so I said well why shouldn't I break dance with water and I started doing it and I did it one day in an audition and I got it and I went to Hawaii and I filmed it and that's the first time it ever came out on television It was a Mountain Dew commercial and since then a lot of kids saw that commercial a lot of kids started breaking out water these are called baby windmills which are the windmills that are fastest because you're using less space and the gravitational pull of the earth allows you to go faster Okay, a basic track would be like this. Then from the track came the halo, which is this. Which is the spin around the head. So an air track is no shoulders and no head in the air. Now you will see aerial wings which are windmills that are done in the air. Okay, these are called push-up windmills. Oh this is called backspin to headspin, backspin to headspin. Okay, cause another piece for me. Windmills, I got all different kinds. Windmills like this, and I'll do windmills holding my foot. And woman is holding a crotch. <laughs> Don't spin, just stand. The beginning of the head spin. Soon all I do Even if I get older, I know I'll be teaching. And I'd, I'd want youths to keep dancing because our dancing, it, it's an art. Is I have two kids with me. <laughs> These two kids that I've taught, Orko and Caesar, are really good. And they are the strong point now. I've originated a lot. And... I keep stressing the idea that the youth are the one that are going to create all our future. And what's funny about it is that when I was in Rhode Island, I was going to college and I was going to Garcet's Commercial College, which is computer programming. And my father didn't want me to leave college. But when I seen the, the movie Flashdance and I saw that my group, you know, was on in the films, that's what made me go back to New York and, and got that audition for Nike. Oh, because they saw something new. But I saw an audition for an acrobat. And I said, what I do is pretty acrobatic. I mean, I don't flip, and I, at that time I wasn't flipping or anything. And I said, well, let me give it a shot. And I prayed that night before I went to sleep, and I asked the Lord to help me out. And I went to that practice the next day, and I auditioned, and I got my chance, and then I came out here. And at first my father didn't really want me to do that, but now he's proud of me. At first, it was just the lower class, our, our blacks and our Hispanics, you know, Puerto Ricans and Dominicans in New York City. But then it branched off. When it came out here to California, a lot of middle class kids, they said, well, mom, I want to do that, you know. I, these kids spin on their head, I, I could do that, I'm pretty strong. And before you know it, it's just started spreading. And I've, I've even taught rich kids, rich, you know, upper class, high class, with corporations, their parents own, own um, 
Coca-Cola, um, Puma, Nike. And these kids just, it's universal. I feel that it, it, it's no class. As far as the lingo, I don't know if, if in France they go, voulez-vous, yo, what's up, you know? You know, if you were down, yo, what's up, B, you know? My name's Oz and I'm fresh. They, it used to be like that. But what's more important is that everybody knows that it's fresh and it's new and it should be for everyone. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it, I'm getting close now. Try more harder. Damn, it's hard. Freeze. Break dancing became very popular in Los Angeles in the early 80s and after five years it died down because people were afraid there was a lot of bad publicity they would say that these kids were uh, gang affiliate that stereotype negative image kept being perpetuated in the news yet when the news would come to the center and interview kids and ask kids have have you ever gotten hurt? The kids would say, no, football and you know, skateboarding and other, other sports are very violent and kids get hurt. Yet it's accepted in the mainstream. And this art form obviously was not acceptable. So therefore it died out. Well, the people that first brought breaking out into public, you know, they didn't show the, the big man what they really wanted. Because you know? the first thing they was thinking, is they gonna break their neck or what, you know? There was this medical report that came out in, the, in, uh, in one of the journals that said that breakdancing was, was hazardous to your health. Apparently one or two kids had gotten hurt. Yet we were developing different types of safety equipment, helmets, pads, but they weren't interested in that. If you break dance in a specific place or in some cities, you get a ticket, you know, which is really ridiculous because if the kids have a place to go, and express their art, then they won't have that problem of doing it on the street for money. I mean, hey, they're poor, that some, some, of, those could, some of those kids need the money, you know? The reason why breakdancing has died down is because they have milked it and they have done it this way, done it that way, used it in commercials, used it in shows, done movies, and they've done so many different things with it, they haven't, even, they haven't really allowed it to be considered a true form of dance, actually was the European form of breakdancing. And a lot of people don't know that. That's where it started. Ballet started on the street. But this is something that came out of poor people, poor kids, and, and basically, I think that the establishment didn't really understand or see a value or significance in this, in this movement. When breakdancing lost its audience, many of the dancers Animation was one of the few who was still performing in 1989, yet even his act had changed. <laughs> I'm not a break dancer anymore, but I became a one-man show. I, instead of break dance, with musical, comedy, theme songs, to bring my dance out.
them names is very familiar. I remember them so much. We were like a family. It was like team back then. Uh, we danced together. We ate together. We did we did a movie together, and um, it was it was wonderful that how we became. It was different races, and it was not, it had to do nothing with color. I was recently watching a, an old video tape of uh, the Radiotron and some of the kids that used to come to the center. And it was, it was kind of saddening because as I watched the tape, I started to see a lot of the kids who were really like some of the best dancers are now, some of them have passed away. They've gotten killed. Orko, who was, I mean, top, top notch break dancer, joined the army. Another young man named Caesar. Incredible, he did, uh, broke the record in head spins. Did about 200 head spins. He got into skateboarding, but now he's not really doing anything. Um, he just graduated from high school. Uh, probably will just get a job. And, you know, break dancing will just be a memory. Me and Osbrook, we, oh my God. Nah, me and that guy, we were, wow. It's, it's just too much for me and this guy. This guy, he was, he was a very creative person. He was a break dancer, but he was also one of the best actors as Street, um, playing on Hill Street Blues. And it also kept him with the little kids itself. Until once upon he got married and he had two kids and he went out of town. Some people from um, Japan, in the Philippines, I'm sorry, in the Philippines had came over there and took his kids and his wife away and it turned him crazy that he became into a crazy home. I wish that the best for him, but I haven't seen him. It's really sad to hear that. I would be the most satisfied person on this earth if I could see that our art won't die, that it survives and that it like classical music, like rock and roll, we have rapping. Like the art that you see in galleries, that we have our art in those same galleries, as Van Gogh, as all those famous artists from our past. In this footage from 1984, we can spot a young wanted to be a dancer, but for now was only a member of the audience. He studied what the break dancers did, and in 1989, he brought back the influence from the past and created his own fresh style. He like a robot. It reminds me of a cricket. <laughs> Spodacious. Strobe lights. It looked like it was a strobe light, but there wasn't. That, that's how I. He, he do he do dances that that normally other people. Can't do. And, and uh, <laughs> shut up. Okay. I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> it, it was like having an orgasm. He was very <laughs> good. <laughs> it's wild, it's crazy. Explosive. It's good, he's the best. Uh -huh. The thing that motivates me to be the best is when people are watching you and they're appreciating your performance, it's okay to be good. It's all right to be uh, very good. It's another thing. I want to be the alien of breakdance. I want to be able to do things that no one else on this planet will ever be able to even imagine. I want to be able to do things where when people watch me, I just change their whole idea about everything. Allow me to introduce myself. The name is Groovin' Ruben. I am what you call a contortionist. Run them over if they don't move in. Flat top shall not bite you. Close up. Count Dracula style. Look at the expression on her face. Close up. Ah, you have strong wheels. <laughs> the thing is, is when you pull your audience in, it has to be like a human magnet. Because sometimes I'll say that right before a performance. Time to work, time for me to use the human magnet. Like this, and like this, and they draw to you. You can begin your performance, and then your audience stands there and look at you. Because I may start a performance like this. In all these different modes and movements. And I said, man, what is he getting ready to do?
the thing that separates me from the average person that's doing the type of dancing that I'm that, that I do, you can tell that it's more my spirit talking to you when I give you a performance opposed to just bland movement. I'm expressing my spirit to you, expressing how I feel, expressing my emotions as I move. That's why I put so much emphasis in, in, on everything that I do. Because I dance to more than just one level or one style of song. Like you may have some break dances breaking to nothing but rap music. And then you may have other dances that may break to nothing but the constant day type sound. You know, of course, that's enough to drive any man crazy. An example would be, for an example, like one thing that the average breakdancer probably wouldn't do is this hand movement here. Now the illusion, the illusion with this hand movement is that the hand can basically be alive without, you know, any assistance. You know, that's, that's the main idea, to give that movement of the hand being alive. And that, that's one factor that's set from the idea of breakdancer as I am a break dancer to entertainer. If you feel good, say flat top rock the house. Flat top rock the house. Say it again. Flat top rock the house. One more time, y'all. Flat top rock the house. You get beautiful people, spooks and gooks. The spooks and gooks are the hard ones. The beautiful people, I don't even have to move. I can just go, huh. They go, whoa, it was good. You know, spooks and gooks, you got a damn before. And then they go, yeah. Good thing they don't have Uzis. Because sometimes guys get cool mixed up with ugly. Mmm, cuddly, which ain't cool. Because they, they do one of these numbers. Have you seen this before? Check it out. Go on, get on with the show, man. Oh, they're supposed to be so cool and everything. I'm like, man, why don't you relax and break up the folded arm syndrome? You know, to build and be still. Somebody give this man a coffee break without the coffee, anything. You know, I just try to make him relax. They're gonna come down to see my performance. I want you to feel good. Don't come over here trying to scare all the women away. The only time it gets really hard to concentrate is when some woman will walk up and about, um, about that much material all over her body. You know, and she'll have like this overwhelming body and she'll stand up there and she'll just flaunt it and shake it and throw it at you and just look at you. And you'll be like, oh my God. Right. And then when they, when they do that, I do things like this. I, I, you know, I'll be looking at them, I go. I, I do have the interest in making the profits as I'm there. But even more so, my main concern is to make sure that I can sharpen my tools. Um, now, I'm not rich, but you can make, I can make up to like, um, on a day like today, I can make up to like $350. Yes. Sometimes you have looky-loo days. Crispy. Then you make only $150. Which is rough. What I'm allowing myself to do by me being a dancer and a singer and a clothing designer, I'm allowing myself to be something that people can see, look at, and, and enjoy. Because nowadays, the average performers, regardless of how big they are, they dress in regular clothes. Folks, if you are wondering, which you probably are not, but I think I'll tell you anyway. I am what you call non-toxic. In other words, I don't toot, shoot, taste, nor bass. The flat top is totally drug-free. Otherwise, I'd never be able to move like this. No way. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because 
to all the children in the audience, I don't see too many of them, but there's some here somewhere. But anyway, all the children in the audience, I'd like you to know there's nothing cool about being high. And watch out for those low flying jets. They'll get you. I give myself a role model for basically. You know, this way they can see someone who carries himself well, who's a very cool gentleman, as it de all depends on what you want to call cool. But I just want them to show them that you can be whatever it is that you want, call it cool, call it slick, call it hip, or whatever, without intoxicants. That's something that's very important because a lot of our people here in America are just being overwhelmed with drugs. Everywhere, just overwhelmed with drugs. And I can say that I have never had cocaine ever. And I tell you, it's spooky. It's, it's like a... A, a evil spirit moves inside of you because you just change and you walk around like a zombie you know and it just it destroys you it's just that simple and you know I, I've even had a chance a couple of times to become a drug dealer myself I've had people to come hey man I can do this and you know something what makes it so funny at the time that they were asking me to do these things money was very thin only thin yeah I raised the eyebrow here and raised one there I didn't do it. Come on back there, give with, the, give, give with some teeth. Okay, everybody, be you chocolate or vanilla, I want to see some teeth. Grimy green or pearly white, smile. If you have to say soggy cornflakes, say it, just smile. Okay, on the count of three, everybody show me, show me your grain. One, two, three. Laughter is like food for the soul. When you're singing, you're happy, regardless of how sick you are, if you can laugh and be happy the whole time that you're sick and you have only a short time to live, then you won't die so sad. You'll, you won't die so sad and, you know, you won't be so regretful of life. My philosophy of life. Is that cool? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. My philosophy of life. Okay, you can walk. But as you walk, just watch your step. You can never tell what's going to happen in the next five minutes. So try to enjoy yourself each and every last step of the way. And don't be so concerned with trying to make everybody else happy. Because if you're knocking yourself dead trying to make everyone else happy, you'll never be happy. Never. I've tried it, I've tried it, and it wouldn't. You know? Really. It's make yourself happy. Make you happy. What's up everybody and how you been? My name is Oz Rock and I'm here to send a message in a story all about glory to reach you all in your own territory. It's the preparation sweeping all our nations to help this world wipe out temptation. So kick back, relax, listen to the rhyme because he's been here since beginning of time. Yes, his name is Jesus Christ and his love is so bright. He's with us all through day and night. Forgave our sins so we could win eternal love and life with him. So no matter I am or in what Christ Proud. I love you God and I always feel proud to fellowship with one another. We are your children that makes us brothers so try to be good like you know you should. All you drug pushes thieves and all you hoods cause it's you that creates and changes your fate. Stop praying before it's too late. You go Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, 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 hit it. <laughs> the end. That's just a little rap that I made up. Thanks. I'm 21, and I've been doing this since 17. She's 24, and our baby's seven months, and he gonna come out like this. 